You are listening to The Catholic Wire. Everybody and welcome to the Young Man Podcast. I am your host Anthony Alley. Today I am joined by Father Zapeta. Hello, Father. Hey, Anthony. Good to be here. And our special guest today is Oliver from Colorado. How's it going, Oliver? It's good. Thank you for inviting me, guys. Oh, for sure. This is going to be a good show. Definitely. So, um, Father, I just wanted to start by asking Oliver a few questions, if that's all right. Okay. I guess that's okay. I'll just make sure you. I bleep everything afterward. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just kidding. Oliver, uh, what year of school are you in? Um, I am in the... T- um, I'm a f- sophomore. Mm, okay. How big is your class? My class? Well, it depends which one. Uh, I switch between classes every class. So I'd say a pretty good pretty good size you know i'd say if you go to omaha the the high school the boys high school it's like each of those classes around that size so it's a pretty big school then yeah it's pretty big it's got it's got hundreds of kids like, i'd say a uh, estimate about maybe 800 kids wow something around that that's an estimate that's crazy because when i went to school um when I went to public school here in South Dakota, my class, the average class in the high school had maybe 20, maybe 25 kids in each, in each grade. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So I can't imagine having a class that big. You probably don't even know half the students in your class. No. Um, each class I go to, there's like a whole different group of kids. Well, probably about, probably about 20, 20, 25 students in each classroom, each class wow. I go to. And that's just for the classes I go to, not including every other class. Mm, if it makes wow. you feel any better, I was talking to a lady that went to L.A. and her school had 6,000 kids. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. That's yeah. crazy. And, and I forgot to mention this, but this episode we're going to be talking about um, public school and Catholic school and the differences and the, the pros and cons since our boy Oliver here is going to public school. And you had gone to modern day for a couple of years, Oliver, or just one year? Okay, so when I first went, it was the second semester. I'd say about two school years ago. So then COVID hit. It ended. I came for one quarter then. And then last school year, I went for three quarters. So about a year in all. Okay. All right. Okay. And I was his teacher for a couple months. Yes. Yeah, and you very good. Yeah. <laughs> Still my favorite teacher to this day. <laughs> I actually um have a teacher that reminds me a lot of Father Cepeda. I don't know why he he's from Mexico actually. He's he's really oh. cool. He just reminds <laughs> me of you. I don't know what it is. It's, I bet it's I the accent. I don't think it's because he's from Mexico. It's just he reminds me a lot like you. Oh, oh. I I don't know if that's a. Uh... Since we're going to be like bashing public schools, that might be not very good for me. <laughs> no, he's he's one of the good teachers, you know. Okay, thank you, thank you, Oli. No problem. He's my favorite teacher there. So, so good. I went to public school my, I guess, entire K through twelve education except for three quarters. So most of my senior year, I moved down to Omaha and boarded, and. It's only been the last couple of years, I guess, since getting out of college. I went to a two-year school, but I kind of have been, you know, reflecting and looking back on just the um, the different pros and cons of high school and just the different positive and negative effects it had on me. Because you know, as I was going to school, I didn't know any, I didn't know anything else, so I thought it was awesome. And you know, I did have a lot of friends and. I guess the main thing that I enjoyed was the uh, the sports and the competition. You know, yeah. I played basketball, I played football, I did track, and I loved that part. But I guess today we're just going to be talking to Father about the differences in a in a public school and a 
private Catholic school. And uh, well, Father, I guess I'll just start with the question: Why do you, why should we try to go to a Catholic school if we can? Well, if, if you don't mind, let's uh, let's keep talking a little bit about the stories there because I also went to public school uh, most of my life, actually all my life. I never went to a public school, never in my life. Uh, to me, being, being in Omaha was was quite a, quite a revelation to actually see a public school. And I, I don't know, Ali, I mean, uh, we can talk about our stories here. Uh, I would say that the first thing that we need to, to look into is a school is supposed to give you uh, integral education, right? Yeah. So, you know, you get a lot for the brain. You, you study a lot of sciences and you learn things, you know, you, you memorize stuff and you make papers and works and whatever. Uh, but integral education is not just the brain. They also have to train your will. In other words, it's not just about making you smart. It's about making you good. And that's mm -hmm. where we have a problem with public schools. Because there's no way to be good without religion. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, I think we can all be honest here. Uh, we tend more towards evil. You know, mm -hmm. our our natural inclination is more towards evil. And what draws us away from evil, really, is, is religion. You know, the, the idea that there's a hell, that there's a heaven, that there is a, a, a God that became man for us and died for us on the cross, and, and we can just be committing sin because if we do, we're injuring him and damaging him. And so that's what really draws us back. And when you see a public school, you guys will be able to tell me, a lot of the kids don't have much religion, and what that causes is that they don't really care whether they're good or bad, they, they're just trying to do, you know, what, what's fun. Have a story here. Uh, one day when I was going to public school, there was a guy, we called him, uh, basically the, well, this, we might get censored for this. We called him the Olmeca, mm -hmm. which I won't translate what that means because we would get censored probably, but basically it's <laughs> a person of, of a certain culture in Mexico. And so that, that particular culture is very agile, is people that are very agile. So we're in a second story floor and all the guys in the classroom start going, hey, hey, hey we should throw the Olmeca down the, you know, down the balcony because, you know, those, they're really agile and these guys can, you know, he'll, he'll fall on his, on his feet. And everybody's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then and some people were like, no, 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 don't do that. And, and the guy, the guy himself goes like, yeah, 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 throw me. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> so here goes everyone. They just grab the guy and they're all like carrying him on the shoulders they go out the balcony and they throw him into a bush, a bush, and we just see him disappear. Like, <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> the guy. Jeez. Like, you know, what, what happened to him? And then we just see the face just racing up from the bush. Like, yeah, I made it! I made it! <laughs> 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 oh man, we got in. I mean, you, you get in so much trouble. And but you know, when I think about it, never once, or I, not that I remember, anyways, did we talk about religion when I was in public school. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys. Um, well, for me, actually, it's, uh, you're not going to like this, Father. I don't like it much either. But um, we actually are learning about different religions in our school, in history mm -hmm. class, actually. So mm -hmm. we did learn about Buddhism yesterday and Hinduism today. But... Um, well, I love yeah, that, Oliver. That gives me good material for the show. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, no, thank you. Uh, but it's the thing is, I don't, I don't know why. I don't think we'll learn about Christianity. It's like something weird about it. I don't think we'll learn about it. We're just learning about like other religions. I feel like they tend to like drive people away from Christianity for some reason. Just mm, that's interesting. You can tell us. Yeah. What? You'll be able to tell us. But yeah, for sure. Oh, I yeah. mean, uh, I uh, that's actually one of the clips I was going to play for you guys. It's like uh, they, they, don't, they don't care about that at all. Um, so uh, you, to, to kind of cover this really quickly, then, you, in order to have a good school, you have to have both intellect and will, and then you have to train for, uh, you have to train, you have to have religion in school. And actually the church condemns the idea of having a school without religion. That's something that a lot, a lot of people don't know. But there is even a, an ecclesiastical censure, that means a, a punishment, that is given to parents who send children to schools that 
don't have any religion or neutral schools. Now, Oliver right now might be like, oh, my parents are going to be excommunicated. (laughs) 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 No, no. And here's the deal. Uh, I mean, the church does have that, but it also makes an allowance for the cases where that's not possible. In some cases, it's it's not possible to send your child to a to a school that has religion, whether if it is because there is no school that has religion, or the high school is very small at that school, or it's too far away, or it's it's too difficult for you, or there might be other circumstances that might hinder you from going to a to a school that has the full education, the full uh, necessary things for education. So uh, yeah, the church does forbid that, but it also allows for those cases where it's not possible. Now, the important thing is when you're in public school, you need to make the dangers that are there as remote as possible. You need to be prepared to face all the problems that you're going to face. And uh, we're actually having this show, if you if you allow me to say it, Ollie, uh, yeah. we're having this show because uh, just a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, Oliver actually called me on the phone and he was telling me how I was his favorite teacher the amazing Father Cepeda. <laughs> and, no, no, I said that. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm kidding. Fine. Yeah, I said that. No, he was saying that, um, he was telling me that he was going to go to public school and that he would appreciate some advice. And I figured there must be a lot of guys that probably would appreciate the advice. Uh, I don't know. If you guys have any comments, interrupt me. But I'm going to play something here really quickly, just uh, of what kind of stuff is going on in public schools, okay? Go for okay, it. Go for it. So the first thing is this, uh, we're talking here, this is a parent that is complaining about some stuff that is being played uh, to kids. This is actually kids, not in high school, but in, in elementary school. Uh, the program Brain Pop that the kids spend hours listening to is actually already teaching our kids in our district what she's talking about, as well as telling them about critical race theory. I recorded the video from Brain Pop's official Instagram page. I uh, hope you can hear it racism in our society a built-in system of bias that makes life easier for white people and more difficult for black people and other people of color it puts them at greater risk for poverty unemployment and disease structural racism is a factor in some disturbing trends black people are nearly six times more likely than whites to be imprisoned and black men are killed by police at more than twice the rate of white men all right, so that's the first video. They're, they're telling our kids, they're telling our black children that they are oppressed by white people and that it's in the system, so they don't have a chance, and that our good policemen are, are more apt to shoot a black man or a black woman, which is ridiculous. I'm going to pause it right there. Uh, so so the, the first thing that we're going to have to face in public school is the wrong teachings, meaning they're going to teach you stuff that is false, that is not true. And uh, that comprehends history, morals, politics. Right now, he was talking about critical critical race theory. What is that, Anthony? I'm sure I'm sure you know what that is, Anthony. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of studying on that the last year or so. So, critical race theory is basically uh, an updated form of critical theory, which was created by these German scholars that were studying the communists, like um. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels and those guys from the early 20th century who, you know, they were the ones who started the ideas of communism and their ideas were used to overthrow the government in Russia and then China and all these different countries. And critical race theory is basically instead of the working class versus the, what, what would the word be? Like the bourgeoisie or the, you know, the upper class, the upper levels, it's it's black versus white or native American versus white. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it just basically, you know, it simplifies every inequality or inequity problem in America, whether it's a like enrollment in a certain college course or um, pay differences, it just simplifies everything to race and systemic racism in the country. And it's very easy for, um, young people to swallow that because you know it it makes the world a lot easier for them and with how young people are you know we really don't know anything anyways so it's just really dangerous it's really dangerous Mm -hmm. actually um 
if I can say, uh, my parents actually mentioned that to me. Uh, they because they don't want me learning about that stuff because they don't want me to, you know, that to be put in my head and stuff because they think it might convince me. But uh, so they told me uh, if they teach me, if they start teaching me that, then uh, just tell them and they'll probably take me out of that class just because they don't want they don't want them to teach me that stuff because, you know, people don't mm-hmm. understand. Yeah. And That's- actually, Oliver, I know of guys who say if you're um, they're telling t- parents, like if your student hears any of these buzzwords, you know, like um, equity or white fragility or anything like that, the student should just get up and walk out of the classroom because you're no longer in an education zone. You're in an indoctrination zone is what um, Jordan Peterson. That's what he says. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't I'm not surprised. That's what your parents have said. And I, yeah. I bet. I bet Ollie and any other high schooler would gladly take the advice of walking walking out of a classroom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, like yeah. all right. <laughs> My parents said so. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't yet. But actually, um, I've I've had thoughts of it so far because uh, I, I'm learning AP Psychology. Uh, mm-hmm. so it's actually a really interesting class. But the teacher, I don't know. So he's basically like, like for example, today he was like. He was hating on Fox News. He's hate. <laughs> he, he like. He verily like. Obviously, yet yeah, slightly hates on like Republicans and Donald Trump, and like, you know, like we learned about that stuff. It's really interesting class, but it's like, it's the it's just the teacher. It's like I don't know. Yeah. Don't yeah. Know he's, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna bring that stuff. And and here's the thing. Just to really quickly explain communism to some of our our listeners. Uh, who might not, I mean, you've heard the name, I'm sure, but you got to kind of realize what it is. Uh, Communism, socialism, all those things, they are a political movement, you could say. Uh, The purpose of that is not, uh, they say the purpose is to bring equality and to bring the poor classes up and to bring the rich down, kind of like to make everything equal. That's their supposed agenda, but that is not true. Really what communism and socialism seeks to do is to create a revolution in order to bring down the the order of things as you have it right now, meaning the Western order of things and more, more, most particularly Christianity and, and all the morals of Christianity. And one of the things that communism does is it, they try to find a way to divide society and put one group of society against another because once you are able to do that, you can use the this, the malcontent group in order to bring the revolution. So basically, communism is always done by a small group of people. They grab the mob, they get the mob angry for some reason, and then they bring them down. In Russia, it was about you know their proletariat, the the workers, the poor workers. In China, it was the 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 farmers, the poor farmers. In Cuba, it was the ones the guys from one party against the guys from another party. And so forth here in America, what they're doing, because really you don't have that much of a poor class in America. Most people are very well settled. Like a poor guy in America is a rich guy in Mexico. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. in America, what they're doing is they have been using race to divide society and be able to bring one group against another. And that's why you find all this bombardment in movies, in classes, in ev- everywhere to try to convince everyone that black people have been wronged and they have to stand up against white people. There is some history to that, but it's not as, as bad as they portray it. And, and actually, as many commentator, commentators say, that's long gone. But they try to keep that hate alive so that they can later use that mob to bring, uh, and not just, not just black people, but just they're, they're addressing black people, young, LGBT, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, well, there's, there's critical race theory, there's critical queer theory, there's like... um some disability studies. So, you know, to rile up disabled people and then there's fat studies and, you know, it's just basically flipping, flipping the order of things. And yeah, just yeah. taking every single minority group and trying to rile them up. Just to play another sure. clip here. This is actually a, a union teacher that is actually, this is a, a, this is a, what do you call it? A meeting of union teachers. And they're talking about uh, how they can promote communism in schools. Mm. How do you actually, as a, as a teacher in a classroom, kind of promote ideas of Marxism or to kind of begin to fight for those things? I think, you know, part of it is that in, 
particularly at a high school level or an elementary school level, you have to be careful you know, because your your job they, they want you to stick to fairly narrow things, and that can be very frustrating. But I do think that wherever you possibly can, part of it is actually just allowing for room. It's a, it's a short clip because you know those kind of things don't come out. Um, Ali, you were mentioning about this teacher that you can see he has an inclination. When yeah. I was in in uh, I think I was in must have been eighth or ninth grade, I think. This is in Mexico, and this is 25 years ago. 25 years ago? About, yeah, 25 years ago. Wow. And I had this teacher, and he was kind of weird. And I was like, I couldn't put my finger, back then I couldn't put my finger on what it was. He was our art teacher. And I bet by now most people can imagine what I mean when I say weird. Um, <laughs> you know, he would put some crazy movies to us, and, and like uh, supposedly art movies, and all this time is like I could not find the sense of that. I was like, what was, what was the point of those movies? Because they were really weird back then. Now that I'm older and that I that I, I see all this stuff, I realize that teacher obviously was, you know what? And those movies were supposed to trigger students to see if there was someone who would respond to such things. That's a very very common, you know. So you're gonna see that they push communism politics, uh, liberal politics, all that kind of stuff. You're going to see that they push uh, false history, and that's probably the hard one, the hardest one to spot. You'll never hear Ollie, you'll never hear them speak about communism in a bad way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard anything like that. Or oh, not. wow. Not uh, sorry, um, just to interject, but I've been noticing this a lot when I, every once in a while, I go to the gym in our public school to lift with some of my buddies that have graduated already and I'll kind of go into the classrooms that I was in before and you look into the library the little bookshelves and there's so many books and I notice this all over the place there's a lot of books about World War II and the Holocaust and Nazis you will never see a book about the the communist like Bolshevik revolution and you know the like six million Ukrainians that were you know forcibly they were starved to death during the 1920s and all the millions and millions of Russians, you know, citizens that were killed by their own government. And the same with the, with, uh, you know, the communist Chinese party back mm -hmm. in the fifties. And it's just crazy. You never see anything about that, but the, the Nazis and world war two is always, always talking. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Oli? Um, I, I, don't, I wasn't going to say anything. I'm sorry. I was just listening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm listening right now. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, because here's I, the thing. I do, I do notice that stuff. It's like the thing I learned in Catholic school. Like they were right. They warned me. Like they're like, good thing. Um, good thing they taught me that stuff in Catholic school that I was going to learn if I went to public school. Because if they didn't, I probably would have gone to public school and believed a lot of the stuff they said. So now I'm more. Now I understand. It's like I don't really speak up about it. But it's like I understand for myself that it's not right, mm -hmm. and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I like I'm happy that they taught me that, so I know for myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I you can you can tell. Sense. No, it does. It totally. And you can tell your friends, you know, behind the teacher's back. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Hope, That's what I, I mean. hope I don't get in trouble <laughs> for saying that, but definitely. No, and I mean, okay. even sometimes I'll tell you something. Sometimes it's really fun to do it in front of the class. I had a teacher yeah. of philosophy in high school. And by that time, I was a little bit more aware of things. And she would come, the poor poor lady, she didn't know anything about philosophy. I mean, she, she, was, she was being paid to teach the class, but she had no idea what she was talking about. And she would come up to class and say stuff, and I would just raise my hands and, and say, teacher, I don't think that's what that guy meant. And, <laughs> and correct yeah. her. And then I started fighting her when she would like start teaching, obviously, some bad philosophies. And the class would love it. The class would <laughs> totally love it. They were like, yeah, you know, like just so much fun. Poor teacher was suffering so much. I feel bad for her. Yeah, and, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. And then she would just say like, what do you want, Cepeda? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I was going to mention, I, sorry. No, I've actually been tempted to do that a few times. But it's like, uh, like they've talked about stuff like LGBTQ. And mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I, I've actually been tempted to speak up. The only thing that's really holding me back is I have, I have noticed some. There is kids there that are, you know, LGBTQ, part of that. So it's like 
I don't really know if I would speak up to the whole class if that would be a good idea. But like I'd say to my friends, try and teach them, you know what I mean? I would I would say if you if you did speak up in front of the whole class, you'd probably get attacked verbally. That that's I, what I, I mean. I'm kinda scared of that. Yeah, I never I was never one to speak up in class, honestly. I never had the guts to do that. So it's cool that father yeah. did it though. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, You'll get in a lot more trouble. I'll, I'll say something, though. My my advantage was that everyone was on my side. So I wasn't in that circumstance where you would have some, some students on, against you, probably. Um, before before we jump into the LGBTQ thing, which is something actually we need to deal with, I was going to say something else about communism, and I totally forgot. But yeah, I mean, no one knows about that, and they won't teach it in school. For example, mm-hmm. I was talking to some people about the 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 Spanish Civil War. That that was that civil war in Spain. It was actually communists taking Spain over, and the nationalists or Catholics fighting against them, and it was brutal. It was like I mean brutal, bloody, brutal, like really bad, uh, and no one knows about it. It's something that is not taught in schools at all. And just to give you an example, and I want to mention this because a lot of people think communism is not so bad. They think oh communism is about giving to the poor the money of the rich and that kind of stuff. Communism, really, what it means is that the government is going to come and they're going to take, oh, that's what I was going to say. Thank you. They're going to take your house. They're going to take your car. They're going to put some guy in your house. They're going to start watching you. Uh, in Spain, what the communists would do to the prisoners of the other, of the army, of the other, of the enemy side, they would bury them. That's one of many things I'm talking about. I was just reading yesterday all the tortures that they would do on them, and it's, it's horrible. They would bury them to, up to their waist pour gas on them and light them on fire. That was how they would deal with prisoners of war. Um, they would uh, blow them up, blow, the, blow up their intestines with a bicycle pump until they blow up and just let them die slowly. Let them, let them you know, slowly to die. Those are one of many things. Uh, they were in, in the book I was reading about the Spanish Civil War, they, killed, they would kill about 3,000 people in the manner of weeks just in one city, because oh, it wow. was, we're coming in and we're killing all our adversaries, all the people that oppose us from the other party. And so communism is something really, really evil. If a teacher comes in public school and they start saying socialism is good, it just never has been tried, that kind of stuff, you can tell them, yeah, it has been tried. It has been tried in Russia. It has been tried in Cuba. It was tried in Spain. It was tried in Mexico. It was tried in China. And if you don't believe me, listen to the Catholic Wire episode where I star with Father Cepeda. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, mm. let's, uh, let's play another clip about the LGBT part. LGBT is a huge issue, too. And uh, let's go back to the parent. That's- the music is not mine, by the way. Oh, tells them. So this is the video by Brain Pop that our kids are spending hours in front of. This is what they're telling them about the pronouns. And the ACT already gave the kids the opportunity to choose their own gender when they took the ACT. I got pictures of the forms. Like me, Moby, and Orbot. They are my best friends. Actually, yeah, they can be used as a singular pronoun, too. Like if you said, I'm going to see my friend, I could ask, where do they live? Since I don't know your friend's gender identity. And some individuals prefer they as a pronoun. Like meet Orbot, they are my best friend. We got kids that can't read and write, and then we're going to teach them incorrect grammar. Oh, yeah. And Father, I mean, it goes even weirder than that. Like, um, I've seen instead of like he and her, like Z and, and Zer. And, you know, it's just, um, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've it's heard insanity. Stuff like, I've heard stuff like, parents like if you don't want to call them dad or mom because that relates to like certain genders there's like different things you could call them if they identify as different things it's just crazy it's scary yeah now it's birth in person it's not mom it's birth in person oh yeah yep yep and they're called partners no not husband no wife now you call them partners yeah (laughs) yeah it's really just a blurring the lines between Male and female, which I guess is just a part of it. Yeah, here's a... I forgot to say something about the communist part, and then I promise we can drop it. (laughs) Uh, Gotcha. Something that a lot of people, students, don't know is that in order to be a teacher in a public school, you need to belong to the union. You cannot just go and get the job. You have to belong to the teacher's union. 
it's kind of like an sorry teachers most of you know this it's kind of like a mafia the the, mm -hmm. the teachers union is a mafia you have to have certain political affiliations you have to support certain things politically in order to make it as a teacher this is not only in america this is in mexico too in mexico you have to be outright a communist if you want to be a teacher you have to support it and here in america is the same thing i know a teacher that actually works in a public school and that person told me that the moment they start talking about against communism or against abortion or against the lgbt agenda they have been fired And here I'm using the pronouns they, because English is not my first language. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fine. Well, I, did not, I did not know that, because I don't know if, <clears throat> I wonder if that's only in the, in the larger cities, because I guess just m maybe South Dakota is such a rural place. But from what I remember in high school, a lot of my teachers were, were pretty conservative. And mm. I think it's mostly because a lot of them were just, you know, hometown people who went to a university and then they came back and, you know, decided to become a teacher. So I wonder, mm -hmm. I want, yeah, I guess I didn't know that. I'd, I'd have to look more into that. Well, no, it's a good observation that you make because I'm sure not everyone is. I mean, this teacher that I know is pretty conservative, mm -hmm. but that person had to, I won't say they, that, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, that person had to be quiet during, yeah. during, you know, many things he needs to be quiet and, and he needs not to, Not to say anything, you know, and if he says something or, or if that person says something, uh, they need to do it under the water. They cannot go and speak up. Um, something, for example, that some people might say, well, public schools are not enforcing that. You know, it might just be one teacher or some teacher. And I want to play another clip. I might be playing too much, too many clips. I'll probably. No, that's probably all. It's fine. Schools it's fine. are now required to teach students. But just in case someone believes that this is not something mandatory, Uh, this is something that came up in the news recently. Public schools are now required to teach students about the contributions of the LGBTQ community. That's just, it's, it's just one of many things, of course, but uh, a lot of things are mandatory in schools. I was reading, at, I don't, I was reading one of the school programs in L.A., in, in uh, California, and it's just perverted. I mean, it, it's, it's something, it's not even fitting for adults. I don't know how they would teach that to, to children, but it's just really, really bad. Yeah, and I mean, it's K through 12, like they're going to be teaching really graphic. Um, and I mean, when I was in middle school, we had we had sex education, which my mom didn't have me in that class. She'd pulled me out. But from what I heard from other kids, you know, it's, um, it's just encouraging. You know, it was like, basically, here's how to save your butt if you're, you know, engaging in, you know, sexual activity as a teenager, as a minor. And, and then just how far this is going to take it to you know, elementary kids, and, and it's not even going to be that. It's going to be about LGBTQ and how, you know, if you're confused, you're probably in the wrong body. Yeah, it's reached really, really bad levels. Like, uh, I mean, that, that course that I, went talk, I was talking about, is this is to uh, aimed at third graders, five graders, six, uh, fifth graders, sixth graders. And, I mean, I cannot say it here on the program. I cannot yeah. say it. It's just so – you could not say that in a reunion of adults – Mm -hmm. If you were in a table with adults and you bring that up with the words they're using, people would kick you out if they're decent people. You know, it's just that evil. And, and you know, me as a priest is something that really gets me in the heart because it's like you're destroying them in the core spiritually, too. I mean, you're bringing them down in, in something that a lot of parents need to know and kids, you need to know this, too. Uh, they use words to mean something else. They mm -hmm. actually have a dictionary. Uh, at least in some public schools, they do. They have a dictionary that tells you, okay, when I say this word, I'm meaning this. When I say that word, I'm meaning that other thing. So basically, they have words that if the parents listen to them, they're not offensive, but the teachers know what they mean by that and what they're teaching the students to do. So for example, continence, or not continence, but uh, abstinence. They, they use the word abstinence, which, which for us means the proper thing, meaning to refrain from bad things in regards to the Sixth Commandment. For the teachers in public schools, abstinence means doing any other thing that does not allow conception. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, I get what you're saying. So they mean actually the contrary of, of abstinence. Mm -hmm. You can do a lot of stuff as long as you don't get, uh, you know, conception. So it's very, very evil. Uh, we probably cannot go too much into details like that because... Um, 
we don't want to do that. This is a clean show and we want yep. to speak only about beautiful and, and clean things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, something that is important to mention there, Ali, uh, well, two things. The first one is when the teachers, you know, if students were not told anything about this stuff, you wouldn't have gay students or Z students or mm -hmm. Y students or whatever they are. Because you don't, you never think of those things. When I grew up in school, no one thought about those things until you reach, you know, high school age. And then you just think about it the normal way. But the thing yeah. is, if, if they're telling you, since you're little, they're telling you, you might be this, you might be that. Pay attention. If this happens, you might be this and that. They're going to mm -hmm. brainwash you. And what happens is that pretty soon you get a guy that needs to call some attention to himself. And he says, well, if I say that I'm this people are going to like me you know i'm going to be popular then i can dye my hair blue and i can you know be stupid in class and the teachers won't bother me because they they have to respect me now that's discrimination now yeah so that's mm -hmm. what they'll do we will take a short break and we'll be back for more you're listening to the catholic wire in the catholic wire we have pledged to provide our online content free of charge in order to benefit as many souls as possible. If you wish to contribute to the support of our network, please go to our website to provide a donation. All your contributions will be used exclusively for the propagation of the Catholic faith. In the Catholic Wire, we greatly appreciate your questions and stories, and we would like to feature them on the air. If you have anything you would like to share, please send it as a voice message, and we may select it to appear in our podcast. I have a friend. I hope he'll, li he'll listen to this show. I, it's a really good friend, actually. This is a guy. He's a, he's a boy. He's 14 years old, I think. He's not Catholic yet, uh, and he almost died. And he in, when he was almost dying, he said that he heard hell. He heard screamings from hell. He didn't believe in God at, at that point. But when he was in the hospital and he was dying, he started hearing like a bunch of screaming and, and people like, you know, complaining or stuff like that. And, and that he kind of realized he had an experience where he realized that was true. And he started talking to God and he started believing in God. And he was telling me that he goes to public school. He's, I think, in eighth grade. He must be eighth or ninth grade. He has been asked out by other guys wow. in school, like oh, other wow. members. This is horrible. We don't really want to talk about it, but it's, it's like that is that that's how bad it is. So, Oli, at, at one point, you will have to stand up for what you believe in. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in trouble with your parents. No, no, no. They, they, they'll probably have the same uh, belief as you about that. Like, no, he... There's no way I would get in trouble if I did that. They'd probably like they probably be proud or like you know I wouldn't get in trouble if I stood up for my faith or anything like that. Well, here's I just dropped something. Sorry, and Anthony, were you gonna say something? Well, um, I was just gonna go back to what you were talking about earlier about if you're being told this, you know, since you're little, all of the LGBTQ stuff, then you're just going to believe it. And I mean, it the reason that's happening, I'd say, is a a lot of it is because of social media, like. I actually just deleted my Snapchat account yesterday or two days ago, but you can go on, you can go and see kind of like the public stories and there's just so much immorality and just backwardsness in there, you know, like teenagers who have their own platform and they're talking about how they, you know, transitioned and they're transgender and how it, you know, fixed all their problems in life. And I have a, I have a cousin who's like a junior in high school right now and he goes to a, a relatively small school compared to Oliver's school, I'd say. And he's saying how, oh, there's there's tons of trans kids and even furries. Like, Oliver, you know what that is. I don't. Yeah. Know. It's yeah. like kids who wear tails around because they think they're animals, you know? And <laughs> like that oh did not God, exist yeah. when I went when I was in high school, maybe in a bigger school. But I mean, I've only been out of high school for almost four years. And, you know, if it gets to where it's widespread in the education K through 12, then it's going to, you know, the numbers of the confused students who take this on is just going to skyrocket. That's yeah, all I wanted to say. It's going to skyrocket because kids, you know, as a kid, uh, you need to have something to believe in. You need to have some foundation, something that, that 
motivates you and triggers you and, and keeps you going. And the thing is, if you don't have religion and you don't have any aspirations in life, uh, uh, what's left for you is just see how crazy you can get in yourself. And that's kind of what happens. And now I'm going to say something here. Uh, and it's true, and I hope people are not scandalized. When I was young, obviously, I was in a public school. I met people that were of that inclination, and, and some of them were openly. And mm -hmm. I talked to them, you know, sincerely, and, and all of them acknowledged to me. All of them acknowledged to me. They did not feel that way originally. Someone else convinced them of that. It was mm -hmm. either an experience or something they saw or some problem they had. Everyone had an experience that moved them to it. Now, I'm not saying this is not something that happens. Well, this is going to be a show on itself, maybe. And we're going to get censored so quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that's is... not like the, the LGBT conversation. Honestly, yeah, it could be his own, its own podcast or even series of podcasts. Yeah. I, yeah. I just, I, let's, let's, just, let's just send that by something really quick, Ollie. Okay. I, this is the advice I would give. Don't do it in front of the teacher because that's just going to get you in trouble. Like, mm -hmm. if you have to do it, do it with the teacher alone or with the students alone. If you do it in the class with the teacher, it's going to become a, a, a wreck. And you won't be able to, they won't even let you talk. Yeah. So it's very important. It, we should fight the fight, but we should know how to fight it wisely. And the thing is, if you want to go with the students, you know, if, I mean, if this approaches you, if these people approach you or someone approaches you and they demand that you accept them, the answer is very simple. That's your private life. I have mm -hmm. nothing to do with that. I don't come and tell you what habits I have privately. So what do I care what you do privately? Why do you have to bring, bring it up? And why, do you have everyone, uh, why does everyone need to accept you? Who else here is sharing what they do when they go here or there or you know, what kind of stuff they do in their private life? No one does that. Why do you do it? Do you need attention? If you need attention, just let me know. We'll give you attention. But honestly... Yeah. I don't care about your private life. Now, if you're asking me if it's right or wrong, I say it's wrong because that's, that's what God says. You, unfortunately, are free to do whatever you want with your life. Give me my freedom and don't mess with me. That's it. Yeah. And, and it's important to tell other, you know, because they're going to be like, oh, you're discriminating them. You're saying this and that. You tell them, no, no, I, I, I care for these people. I want, I want all their good. I want to do as much good as I can to them. But I have to work according to my beliefs, and my beliefs is this. I believe that the best thing for you would actually be to seek out the truth and to acknowledge what the truth is, and, and that's your business. I, yeah. I do not hate you, but I have my code of morals, and you cannot force me to accept yours. That's that easy. Mm -hmm. And the same thing you can say to the teacher. You know, If that comes up, it's like, you're discriminating them. You say, no, 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 I, I respect them. You know, they're, they're people. They have the basic rights that anyone else has. And notice that I'm saying the basic rights, because mm -hmm. they, they have the right to an education. They have the right to food, to eat, to, to drink, to have health insurance, whatever else. Obviously not to marriage, and, and that will be covered later. But that's yeah. what you say. It's like, I respect them. I want good for them, and I, I hope that they do really well. They don't have to be bringing my, their private life here. That's something that's private, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's it. I mean, you're not supposed to be dating in high school. You're not supposed to be bringing that up anywhere, not even in high school. I'm saying even as an adult, you don't go and share your private things to people, you know, your private habits or inclinations to people. That's something that belongs to you. Uh, not that it's good to do it, but it's like, why do I have to accept mm -hmm. it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I agree. It's like, uh, for example, like I've noticed like this happened two or three times so far. Just there's been kids in my class and, you know, the teachers will call out the names and they'll get to like a kid that say their name is like David or something. And they're like, no, that's not my name. No, they're like, I don't want to be called that. I want to be called like Samantha or like a feminine name because they identify as something different. Yeah, so it's wow. like, I don't want to call them that. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why would I? Because if I call them that, even though they want to be called that, it's like, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just, I'm, if I, if I were to call you that, I'd be like encouraging you almost. See, uh, this is where, uh, you know, I'm a priest and I, uh, I try to give good advice, but Ollie, this is where my teenager comes out. And if I were you, I would say, I want to be called your king. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right. Uh, yeah. uh, so I want to like be called your king. So 
You gotta, yeah, if we my king. Do this, yeah, like if you want to play the game, I'll play it too. Call me your king. <laughs> and that's actually <laughs> like, happening. You got to respect that because I got. I want to be called that. Yeah, and that's kind of um, what a lot of people's strategy is. You know, just like the best way to deal with this is just you know make fun of it because it's not worth being taken seriously. Like there's a guy who he's like a huge bodybuilder and he's not, you know, like really competing internationally, like worldwide for these competitions. But he, um, like one day he just like announced that he was a female and then he destroyed like the women's female deadlifting competition. And he was just like, he, you know, he was doing it to make fun of the lot, you know, the illogic of, of the other people that do, cause you know, that's happening in sports all over the place. There's men yeah. competing in women's sports and, Mm -hmm. Now, I'll, I'll say this just to end this section, this part, uh, really quickly. I, I, I said that as a joke. Uh, the first thing we should do, really, is to fight the evil of that ridiculous stupidity. And so what we should actually say is, no, I'm going to call you what you're legally called. If you want to be called something else, change your name legally. Bring your birth certificate to me, and I'll call you whatever it says in there. But if mm -hmm. that your birth certificate says that, I'm going to call you what it says there, because that's your legal name. All right? And I'm not yeah. going to go crazy about that. And that's, you know, it's important to kind of always be logical. You know, think about those things. And before you engage in a conversation, be logical. Think of what you're going to say and the reasoning behind it. Because if you smack them down with logic and, and something else, Ollie, uh, be very cool. He's like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean to say, I be very <laughs> I mean to say, be very cool in the way you say things, you know, the way you act. Don't be afraid yeah. and don't be cocky. Just be very, very reasonable, very serious, very calm. This is what it is. This is what, what is reasonable. This is what's truth. We cannot ha deal with that. We're not here to deal with little kids. I'm a grown man. This is how we talk. That's it. Yeah. And, and people respect that usually. Yeah, now, that'll, that'll gain your respect in the eyes of people you know people that matter that you actually want to interact with because there's going to be a lot of individuals who you know even when you're that respectful and you know calm cool-headed you're going to get hated on by a lot of people for for even saying you know what you're saying uh -huh. definitely now I, i'm just curious to have i think we're going to have to have two shows and i think the next show oliver is going to come and he's going to be like oh, you guys got me in trouble it's like them beating <laughs> They're beating me up now. <laughs> yeah, the aftermath. <laughs> yeah, they hang me up from a tree and they put a rainbow flag on my shirt. Whatever. This I got thing. expelled. I got. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. Well, uh, we're kind of talking about the negative stuff. I I do think Anthony that we might actually require two shows. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Two ones. Uh, but Ollie, uh, I don't know if you can think of any questions right now or anything that else that is in your mind or not really so much. Um. I'm kind of I'm kind of just going with listening to what you guys are saying. It's really interesting. Father, you know, I'm, I'm I did more learning right now. Sorry, Oliver. I no, was no, just going to go, go on, go on. Um, yeah, I guess just I had a, a thing or two to say just to kind of cap this. You know, the main thing that I remember from from going to public school and, you know, something that was just kind of ingrained into me that I've been trying to get out is just the immorality being just the norm in general you know with with all my high school buddies and especially if you're like um on a sports team you know like what they call the locker room talk just it's just so common the objectification of of girls and you know playing with girls emotions and you know how it's just kind of laughed about with the boys and yeah it's just really you, you know you think about it now obviously you know they're just teenagers but it's just disgusting that that's kind of how you're you know, being trained to grow up and, and that's not how men should act. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, you know, uh, how old are you, Ali, again? I'm 15. Okay. So, um, just for, for the record here, legally, Oliver is in this show with the uh, approval of his parents. Mm. Yes. Um, that, that's, that's a very important point. Uh, well, uh, I guess we can keep going on this show because we actually still have some time at, at that age. Uh, that is a big, a big problem and, a, and something that needs to be dealt with. And that is how you see uh, people of the opposite sex. And of course, we're talking here about men and how you look at, uh, at women, especially at girls. And mm -hmm. there should be a great deal of respect there. Uh, the good thing about Catholic schools is that uh, it has to be separated. So you have only boys and only girls. And that is such a huge advantage. Even you, Ali, I remember you telling me that because... 
uh, you you were there at a point where for for a couple of moments there was a classroom where uh, you know like in elementary school they still allow to have girls and, and boys together and then when you yeah. come to middle school they separate them and as soon as you separate them things are so much peaceful so much more peaceful I agree I, I definitely agree you know boys are not trying to to show off and, and girls are not trying to call anyone's attention they just everyone behaves so much better And and you're peaceful too, because as we say, at this age, that's not something you should be dealing with right now. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. in school, society, media, TV, um, uh, movies, all that stuff, they're pushing for, uh, uh, how would you say that? An early knowledge of the things pertaining reproduction and, and what would lead eventually to marriage or, or what should be only within marriage. And they push that very, very early on teenagers. And what's even worse, they push it wrongly with, with lies. You know, they show something that is not true. The fact is that relationships between men and women are something very beautiful, very respectful, very clean, even holy. And the way the society puts it is like they trample it upon the ground and they show it in the dirtiest, most horrible way imaginable. And this is something that we will cover too in the in the young woman in the young woman show. Uh, women are degraded, and you know a big part of us men to fight that is to actually respect women. And Ollie, you're gonna find a lot of girls that don't respect themselves. Mm -hmm. Are you? Is this a? I, I suppose it's a mixed school, right? Well, what do you mean by mixed? Like boys like and have, girls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, It's how many girls are there in the classroom? Depends. I'd say like. I mean, real, real girls. Oh, uh, if you're talking about real girls, like two. No, I'm just going. Um, I'd say mostly boys in a lot of the classroom, but there is, there's always girls in all the classrooms. Kind of depends. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm just put it. I feel like there's more boys there than girls, kind of just in the mm -hmm. school. But it's kind of just like a mix. They don't, they don't really like matter which like people what to put like to put which cl people in which classes. It's kind of just like. You're put in there if you're put in there. They don't look at the genders or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I would say that's really important is you're going to meet girls that don't respect themselves. That they don't have any dignity. They see themselves as society has made them see themselves as objects. And as men has, have shown them to be themselves objects. And so they, they'll look at themselves as, you know, um, Yes, uh, I, I cannot go more into detail, but, but basically as objects. And what you have to do when you're a teenager in high school and some girl comes up who doesn't respect herself, you got to tell her that. You got to tell her, hold on, yeah, I respect you. I, mm -hmm. I don't see you like that. You know, you're not that to me. You're, you're a person. You're a very good person. I, I mean, if you want to talk, you want to be a friend, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. We can be friends with the proper limits, with the proper, uh, you know, uh, cares and... and, and Uh, precautions but yeah. no way no i mean for me you're way more than that you're you're a friend and you're a person and i i think you're someone that deserves respect and dignity so no don't don't bring don't bring that to me and that's something that uh, oh that's going to cause a problem because that might actually cause them to be uh you know more prone to seek you and to try to hang out with you or whatever but it's important to keep that line and that distance mm -hmm. uh, We're going to go into this again. I think we're, we're going to have to definitely have another show. But, uh, I mean, we can go on this one for as long as you guys want. Yeah. But some, something I would say is, is this. Uh, uh, don't, don't date at this age. And that's something, actually, that's, that's church teaching. It's not Father Cepeda teaching. And I know some guys are listening to this and they're going like, what? I got three <laughs> girlfriends. You know, hopefully not. Uh, don't. I mean, uh, here's the thing. Have friends. Yes. Hang out with friends. Yes. Keep yourself. Keep yourself and, and grow yourself first. And, and, you know, it's not so much about having fun right now, but it's more about building yourself up as a man. And especially if you're in high school, most of the people that you will find in high school are not people that are going to help much in growing up. I'm sure there's going to be some really good kids, perhaps. Uh, if, they, if you find them, it's a treasure. If you find a, a good kid, a good friend, whether if it's a man or a, or a girl... Hold on to, to them as a good friend because that's a treasure. But I'm talking, what would be a good friend as a girl? It would be someone. This is a this is going to be a dream here. Uh, we're going to go into. Uh, <laughs> let's picture a girl who wears very modest clothing, and when everybody is joking and saying bad words, you see her looking away. 
let's picture a girl that uh, when everybody is uh, wearing shorts for PE, she doesn't want to, and she takes care of herself in that regards. Let's picture a girl that as soon as school is over, instead of hanging out with the other girls and putting makeup on and smoking or vaping or who knows what, she immediately goes to her parents' car. And, you know, she goes and takes care of her little brother or sister. Uh, picture a girl that when you approach her, she's shy. And she's like, you know, she's not very sure about talking to you. And she never, ever wants to talk to you alone. She always wants to be with someone else when you, she talks to you. Let's picture a girl what, when you talk to her, she has utter respect for herself. And she's like, uh, you got to give her her place, her room, her respect. And there's no way you're dating her alone. If you want to see her, you can go see her at her house where her parents are. Or, you know, you can go out with her if she's taking her sibling or her brother or sister with them. And you have to know her parents first. You know what? Is it impossible? I don't know. I don't see, I don't see much girls in public school like that. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a dream, Father. <laughs> That's, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. The chances of me at my public school... Seeing someone like that, I, I can't even imagine it, honestly. That's, like, <laughs> that's a dream. So here's what you do, Ollie. Here's what you do. If you see someone that you want to be friends with, you tell them, hey, I know this really cool show. It's called The Catholic Wire. You want to listen mm -hmm. to that, and maybe once you listen to the first 10 episodes, come and talk to me, all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I definitely will. I'll, 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 I'll help support you at that school. Give it to my well, friends and stuff. No, I'm actually kind of serious because this is one of the purposes of this show is, and the other shows is precisely that, to help with that. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I will. Yeah. I'll tell my friends about it and stuff. And Oliver, just um, piggybacking off father with the regards to girls, like, you know, I've been there. I've, you know, been, I've wasted time talking to girls in high school and in college. And, you know, when you think back on it, it's just, Yeah. A lot, yeah, a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted effort because, you know, really you could just, you could really be working on a lot more important things and, you know, just kind of learning to discipline yourself and your will like father always talks about. And I mean, yeah, it doesn't sound really, really fun, but, you know, that's just what when you graduate high school and you get into college and, you know, you're going to have to be in a schedule and you're going to have to learn how to, you know, work and work diligently and, and girls mm. just kind of really take a lot of, a lot of time away from you know growing yourself yeah it's actually... sorry go ahead no no i just i agree uh, i'm kind of doing the same thing i'm mostly like i'm not against being friends with them i'm kind of just mostly like you know kind of just staying away from them just just you know at lunchtime i'll just you know play ping pong we have like a ping pong and pool table that's what i'll be doing and then i'll get back to classes you know and then go home it's kind of i don't it's school and I, i know i'm young so it's like Nothing will probably ever work out. They're like, a lot of them mm -hmm. are like crazy, you know? Yeah. So I just, I just kind of stay away from them, but I'm not against being friends with them. Like I have friends, you know, but. And I like don't have. Said, yeah. I don't want anyone to think that we have anything against girls. This applies to both sides. I mean, both boys and girls, it's really hard to find someone right now that, that has proper morals and the proper formation. Uh, and no, I definitely. It's not like we're saying, oh, you know, don't, hang out with them at all, or, you know, don't talk to them at all. No, I mean, the, what we're saying here is this. Your first priority when you're in high school age is not to find your identity, is not to figure out whether you're a dog or a cat or a woman or a girl or who knows what. You, you are what you are, and your first priority is to build yourself up as you are and as God wants you to be. That's your first priority. If you get, if you get friends in the meantime, good. Select your friends. Let them be good friends that you select. And if they're not good friends, don't waste time. Don't waste time. And and it's not really that boring, you know. When you're building up yourself, you find some really cool stuff. You know, if you're building up your, your body, if you're building up your soul by practicing virtue, by doing hard stuff, you know, like uh, we're going to be talking about in this show, you know, uh, putting yourself to the test, uh, trying to get a good job, trying to make some money, trying to create a business, trying to learn some craft or something. There's so many things that you can do. And when you see yourself building up, it's actually really, uh, um, really encouraging, really something that is really great. There's a lot of gratification into that, good gratification. Is that a word? Oh, yeah. And, yeah, okay. it's, yeah. It's much more gratifying than, um, you know, getting so-and-so's Snapchat and, you know, talking mm -hmm. to her. And then you're like, oh, wait, this isn't going to work out. And then you just feel 
empty <laughs> instead of, you know, yeah. learning <laughs> learning how to play an instrument or reading a book about a subject you're really, you know, interested in. Mm. And, and so that's the thing. I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah, I mean, that is possible. You can make friends and whatever, but it has to be the right way. I want to I want to say just uh, to finish with my part here. I I want to say really briefly the advice that that we're giving right now. First, when it comes to the public school, uh, the public school is not going to supply teaching for the will, is not going to make you good. So you have to supply for that for yourself. You have to make sure that you're practicing religion. You have to make sure that you're training your will in many, many different ways, which hopefully we can help with this show. Second, in public school, you're going to get a lot of wrong teachings. When it comes to history, when it comes to morals, when it comes to politics, they're going to teach you communism a lot. They're going to teach you uh, push the liberal agendas right now, LGBTQ stuff, uh, stuff against the family, stuff for socialism, stuff against Christianity. So you have to be, you have to educate yourself in order to be able to to counteract all those things. You actually have to, if you're a kid right now listening to this, you do have to teach yourself and breathe for yourself. And one thing is very important, you know, listen to the Catholic wire. <laughs> and the other thing is when it comes to, to girls, the advice that is given here is high school, don't date yet. Make friends, sure. Don't date yet. Uh, and, you know, tell your parents everything. I told this to, to you, Oli, when we were on the phone. Yeah, be honest. Honesty. That, yes, it, that works so well. I can tell you that. Uh, okay, I, I, was, I said I was going to finish, but I always do that. I never do. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, I was telling Ollie when we were on the call that when I was around high school, almost around the end of high school, I came out with something that I call the policy of truth. And what that meant is that I was going to tell the truth all the time because I figured it's a manly thing to do. I was like, you know, if I'm man enough to do something, whether if it's good or bad, but if I'm mad enough to do something, I should be man enough to face it and say it. You know, I shouldn't be hiding it from anyone. So say, for example, if I, uh, I'm just going to give an example. Let's say that I, uh, a friend offered me beer and I drank beer. I would come home and I would say, yes, I drank beer. Uh, mm -hmm. If some, you know, if uh, anything like that. And the first thing I did this, my brother got, he was like, what the heck are you doing? You know, how can you tell my, our parents this stuff and whatever? And I'm like, well, I told him, you know, what I thought. Here's a funny thing. And this is what I was telling Oliver. That worked out so well for me. First, my parents trusted me amazingly. Mm. Like all my other brothers, they would go out and, and make sure where they're at and everything. It's like with me, they would be very, very trustful because they knew I was naive or blunt or whatever you want to call it enough to tell them everything. So it was almost uncomfortable for them, but it was very good for them because they trusted me. And the other thing is they were always able to give me good, honest advice. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, your parents, even though they might block some things that you like, they are the one, the one friend that you have that is truly disinterested. They really gain nothing from you. So all the advice that they give you is going to be just for your own sake, for your own good if they're Catholic parents and most, most Christian parents, I think would do too. Uh, and so it's a very good thing. If you're a teenager, go to your parents and tell them, Hey, this, this guy offered me, you know, drugs today, or this guy told me this and this and that. And, you know, uh, this guy showed me that or this stuff and, you know, tell them that. And at first they're going to freak out, but then they're going to be like, I really like this. I really like this because we can actually work with, with that. So I think that is one really, really good advice. It's hard at first, but then it becomes really easy. Mm. Well, that would have saved me a lot of grief if, if I would have had that plan in high school. Because I know I spent, you know, lots of time with the siblings coming up with stories about where we were and what we were doing and trying yeah, to yeah. mitigate the consequences. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's no, easier and... to face it head on. Because mm -hmm. when Father told me last time, you know, there's been some stuff, like just not not big stuff, just little things and it has helped just to be honest you know to my parents just gets me through it's much easier for like everybody and it's over quicker and then you got both move on you know yeah yeah definitely i think that's uh that's something that we should always uh strive for to just be honest with our parents and that helps a lot and my last advice to finish with my part of the talking would be 
have a lot of devotion to the Virgin Mary. A lot of devotion to the Virgin Mary. A lot of devotion to the Virgin Mary. Go to the sacraments, especially confession, and go to Mass. Um, confession is going to keep us. You know, when we're teenagers, we're constantly falling. There's a lot of stuff that is against us, especially nowadays. Even as grown-ups, confession is what keeps us. You know, you just keep going to confession, keep going to confession. Even if you go to confession and and the priest tells you that, you know, what are you doing? And, you know, gives you some yelling or whatever. Keep going to confession. That's going to keep you. That's going to keep you. Eventually, you're going to make it through. And devotion to the Virgin Mary is super important. Should I tell a story? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, they're not going to say no. So, <laughs> Okay. I know of this guy uh, who was dating a girl that wasn't probably the best. And he had the scapular. And Our Lady protected him in a very, very special way. Uh, I learned from this guy that when one time they, he was dating with this girl and the girl, did, she wasn't Catholic, so she didn't know what the scapular was. And, or she was Catholic, but I think she wasn't like practicing Catholic. I, I'm not sure. Anyways, the girl saw the scapular, grabbed it, and she said that she had, the, her first impulse was to rip it off, just to mm. rip it off the guy. And she mm -hmm. stopped. And she let it go. And then she said, I, I can't date with you anymore. And the guy was like, what? And she's like, yeah, I can't date with you anymore. I, I don't know why I can't date with you anymore. And so just because that, that happened, I mean, she grabbed the scapular, she saw, and, and the guy asked her like, what happened? And, and she said, well, when I grabbed this, I'm, I'm not, I don't know why, I don't know what this is, but I, when I grabbed it, I just got this feeling that I shouldn't be dating with you. So they stopped dating. Uh, that girl probably would not have worked out really well for that guy. Yeah. Uh, here's what happened. That girl was murdered. I think uh, may she rest in peace. She was mur murdered. I think four years after that, with her husband. Wow. They were both. They were both together. They were kidnapped and murdered. And this guy, when he saw that, he was like, "Wow, that was that was our lady protecting me." Uh, I pray for that girl, whoever it is, whoever it is, and for her husband. But you know, it's, it's an example. It's a true example uh, of how our lady protects us. And Ollie, if you pray to our Blessed Mother and you have a devotion to her, and that's something that you have to do on your own, she's going to protect you. And you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll advise this. And I, I said this before to you. Pray to our Blessed Mother that she sends you in your way whoever is supposed to be your wife, if you're supposed to get married. Uh -huh. If that's your vocation, you know, that's a good reason to pray to her every day. You know, pray to her, take care of whoever is going to be my wife, send her to me when it's good time. And that's going to keep you as well devoted to our blessed mother and you know at that time you also pray to her that she keeps you until the time where you find your vocation whether it be marriage or whatever else yeah i, I definitely pray to her you you've told us you know the border boys many times to have a good devotion you know to blessed mother and you you def i feel like you're one of the biggest people who gave me that like to get closer with her and pray to her because you've told us many times and it it does help yeah, I pray. I pray to her like every morning. Good, yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, I'm glad. And you like better do Sundays too, Anthony. Stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, I do too, Father. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. um, I guess this episode we we didn't get through everything we wanted to talk about, but that's okay because I mean that's that's how podcasts go. You know, you just get into conversations, and we happen to kind of fall down the communist rabbit hole and the LGBTQ subject which is fine because that's an important subject but um father uh thank you for doing all that research and all the videos that was very good yeah thank, oh, you're you, welcome. thank you and oliver thanks for joining us man um i'm really glad you got to come on the show yeah i am too i've been excited all day actually <laughs> yeah me too oh man yeah, so I, I hope you have a i guess we'll see you again father we're gonna have him back on right yeah, we're, we should have another show maybe in a couple of weeks when we he can tell us how he got expelled from school and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll wait a couple of weeks to see the results of his new. Uh, probably a little less than a couple of weeks. Like, <laughs> in... <laughs> I'm just fine. Uh, okay, yeah, I'd be and... I'd be happy to come back on. Yeah, for sure. And right. I guess, um, Father, something I was thinking for the for the next segment of this, I kind of wanted to talk a, a bit about just the um the ineffectiveness of, of public school, which has kind of been documented recently, and just the the problem with kids coming out of school and just kind of, you know, looking for a 
just going to college just to look for a job and they're kind of just, you know, drones. They're just being pumped out of school and they're worker bees and they're just kind of, you know, sheep. They don't really have the the critical thinking skills. And I know you were saying school is to train your will, which I'm not saying isn't important, but I think this is also an interesting subject. For sure. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, here's what we'll do. We'll get Oliver and we'll ask him all these kind of academic questions and he'll have to answer <laughs> them and then we will see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll have yeah. to study a little bit. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there. So thank, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Um, for the greater glory of God, this is Anthony Alley, and you're listening to the Young Man Podcast on the Catholic Wire. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Catholic Wire. If you have found the show helpful, please say a prayer for all our collaborators. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels and share with your friends. For questions and comments, you may contact us at thecatholicwire.org. Thank you.